evening, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to the May uh, 5th, 2015 Chino City Council meeting. If you'll all please rise and join me in the flag salute. Ready? Begin. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Have a seat. Under ceremonials, we got Emergency Medical Services Week, May 17th through the 23rd, 2015. We'd like to call up our fire chief, uh, Chief Sack, Ch I can't pronounce your last name, all this is Shackelford, <laughs> Gina Valley Fire District Chief. We all have days like that. <clears throat> have a proclamation we'd like to read. Whereas emergency medical services are a vital public service, and whereas the members of emergency medical services teams are ready to provide life-saving care to those in need 24 hours a day, seven days a week. And whereas access to quality emergency care dramatically improves the survival and recovery rate of those who experience sudden illness or injury. And whereas emergency medical service uh, teams consist of emergency physicians, emergency nurses, emergency medical technicians, paramedics, firefighters, educators, administrators, and others. And whereas the members of the emergency medical services teams, whether at career or volunteer, engage in thousands of hours of specialized training and continuing education to enhance their lifestyle skills. And whereas Americans benefit daily from the knowledge and skills of these highly trained individuals. And whereas it is appropriate to recognize the value and the accomplishments of emergency medical service providers by designating Emergency Medical Service Week. Now, therefore, I, Dennis Shades, Mayor of the City of Chino, do hereby proclaim the week of May 17th through the 23rd, 2015, as Emergency, emergency Medical Services Week. Chief, we'd like to present that to you in a few words. So, Mayor Yates and Council, thank you for this. We do appreciate bringing focus to this. Of the 10,000 calls that our organization uh, responded on last year, 76% of those were for EMS care. Uh, it's a vast majority of what we do. We deliver great service day in and day out to our community. Uh, as you're aware, and I'm sure the council has been briefed on this, uh, we are looking at expanding our service because of the growing need in that area. Uh, next fiscal year, it's probably going to be uh, rolled out in the fall. We anticipate it's based on equipment uh, delivery. We're going to expand our service and implement paramedic squads. So we'll reallocate personnel. We will go from eight units in the field available to respond to calls to 12 units. So, and just as a side note, I don't know if you saw one of our probationary firefighters uh, made the national news with a response. So he actually pulled the motorcyclist out from under the truck nice. on the 91 freeway when he was responding in uh, to backfill for a fire on Friday. Well, unfortunately, in my house, we've had to call the fire department to some medical problems at my house. In fact, one of them was me. Um, those guys are on it. I mean, they're, I just go, thank God I live in Chino. <laughs> But they're, they're always professional and they're right on it, boy. If, uh, we're exceptionally lucky to have a, a fire district with these uh, trained uh, people they have on their, on their, on their department. And uh, uh, just keep up the good work. And that's a personal thing for me. We, I really appreciate it. About 80% of our personnel are actually paramedics yeah. in addition to be EMT certified. Uh, and we understand that's the need of the community. And we will focus our efforts in that direction and provide the best possible service well, that we can. Thank you. <laughs> thank you, Mayor. Let's have a big round of applause. Good job. Next one is National Public Works Week, May 17th through the 23rd. And I'll call up Jose Alera, Assistant City Manager and Public Works Director. A public works model, we get, if you what? If it goes, grows, or flows. We're going to have our fingers in it. Yeah. <laughs> Some of that flow, flow ain't nice either. And we have our fingers yeah, in. you have your fingers in it. Somebody oh, I didn't shake your hand. <laughs> uh, whereas the public works services provided in our community are an integral part of our citizens' everyday lives. Uh, whereas the support of understanding and informed citizenry is vital to the efficient operation of public works systems and programs such as water, sewers, uh, streets and highways, <laughs> public buildings and solid waste collection. 
whereas the health safety, uh, I'm, I'm tickled over this, I can't stop laughing. So. <laughs> Comfort of this community greatly depends on this uh, facilities and services. And whereas the quality and effectiveness of these facilities, as well as their planning design and construction, is vitally dependent upon the efforts and skill of public works officials. And whereas the efficiency of the qualified and dedicated personnel who staff public works departments is materially influenced by the people's attitude and understanding of the importance of the work they perform. Now, therefore, I, Dennis Yates, Mayor of the City of Chino, do hereby proclaim the week of May 17th through the 23rd, 2015, as National Public Works Week. I'd like to present this to your department. These guys have a job that you just, they can't win. People come to me, I want my street paved. I say, okay, we put them on the list, start tearing up the street. Why, why are you tearing up my street? <laughs> These guys can't win. This is a damned if you do and damned if you don't. Well, that's true. We, uh, we get in people's way and, and it gets tough sometimes. But you know that uh, little saying that we have, if it goes, grows, or flows, uh, is a very, very accurate and true yeah. statement, Mayor. And, uh, uh, as you know, we are in charge of uh, maintaining for the residents of this community and the city council our sewer, storm drain, water systems, our streets, our parks, our trees, our fleet that we have uh, see it running around all over the city, the police cars, our own public works vehicles, all of them. Yep. And, uh, uh, you know, we can't do that without the support of the city council and, and the residents as well. Um, right now, there's a couple projects out there that just seem to be coming to light. It's our Riverside Storm Drain. You may have seen that one. Yeah, and uh, our Tronquille and Benson Avenue water line and storm drain projects. You know, we just ask that the, you know, the community keep in mind that, yeah, we're in the way. We have to put in these five-foot diameter pipes 20 feet into the ground. Mm -hmm. And it's an impact, and we realize that. We do try to get in and out as quick as we can, but there's a tremendous amount of work. And, uh, but keep in sight that at the end, it's when we finish, for example, the Riverside storm drain, the residents won't be walking knee deep in water when it rains and cars won't be floating away anymore. So- it's Providing it rains again. The, providing it <laughs> rains again, you know, exactly, exactly. That's a whole other, <laughs> other problem. But uh, um, again, we can't do these projects without your support, without the residents' uh, cooperation. And we thank you very much. And we thank you very much for the proclamation that you presented us. We're going to enjoy our week. Well, you tell those folks they do a great job. Um, uh, what was I going to say about the? Oh, you know, a lot of people don't realize this. Our town is, what, 105 years old now, city of Chino? And, uh, we got some water lines that were put in 105 years ago, which we pr were spending a lot of money in the last couple of years and more years to come is replacing those things. Uh, when we were turned into L.A. for a while, uh, the, the water main mains were bursting like on Benson and uh, uh, Philadelphia. So we're investing a lot of money going back and correcting those uh, real old pipes. So uh, we'll be working quite a, quite a long time uh, re regenerating uh, and repiping those uh, water pipes. Well, you guys do a great job and tell them good job. Thank you, Mayor. Thank Appreciate you very it. much. It's proclamation night. Whew. Next is National Mental Health Awareness Month, May of 2015. I'm going to call up Michelle Chang, Clinical Specialist, City of Chino, Kathy Ellis, President, National Alliance for Mental Illness, Chino Valley. And the proclamation reads, whereas on behalf of the citizens of Chino, we recognize the month of May 2015 as National Mental Health Awareness Month. And whereas the city of Chino, Chino Valley Unified School District and Healthy Chino Coalition recognize that mental health issues can affect all people. Uh, whereas serious mental illnesses are more common than cancer, diabetes and heart disease. And according to the World Health Organization, one in four people develop some kind of mental illness at some point in their life. And whereas misunderstandings exist about many mental illnesses, and our social culture often wrongly imposes stigma on these conditions. And whereas the city of Chino recognizes the importance of addressing both mental and physical health concerns as being essential to everyone's overall health and well-being. And whereas the city of Chino offers mental health services to youth, adults, and families. And whereas the city of Chino partners with the National Alliance for Mental uh, illness, Chino Valley, to provide free support groups to educate, inspire, hope, and decrease the stigma surrounding the mental health issues. 
whereas the City of Chino, in partnership with the Chino Valley Unified School District and the City of Chino Hills, offers several in intervention and prevention programs for the youth in our community to better equip them to face life's challenges. Now, therefore, I, Dennis Shates, Mayor of the City of Chino, do hereby proclaim May 2015 as National Mental Health Awareness Month. I'd like to present that to you. Say a few words. Thank you, Mayor Yates and members of the City Council for, again, your continued support and for this proclamation of our community services and spe specifically human services, where we do have innovative programs such as counseling and all of our prevention and education programs that we have. And mental health affects all of us here. I mean, it affects everybody and it'll affect someone you know. And sometimes the biggest problem is really asking for help and not feeling scared or stigmatized um, to ask for help. And so even though the services are sometimes here, not everybody will want to ask for it because it is a scary thing. So we do have a partner with us this evening and we have Kathy Ellis, the president of NAMI Chino Valley, as well as Jenny Mott, who is a school um, district uh, nurse, as well as the education coordinator for NAMI, um, who are the biggest fighters and supporters of ending the stigma of mental illness. Thank you, Michelle. Thank you, Mary Yates. Thank you, Council, for the proclamation. Uh, many of our families, they um, go through great, great difficulty coming to terms with their loved one's mental illness. It um, brings upon so much anxiety, and having to deal with just the day in and day out anxieties that the illness brings is really tough. So we're here, NAMI's here to educate and support and to encourage, and um, we have been lucky to have some wonderful collaborations with the city. Uh, we are still in um, the city prison, which is wonderful, and this year we were able to collaborate with um, the police department here in the city of Chino, and I'm met some wonderful um, training officers who had great compassion and care and um, passion for what they were teaching the officers and that was very exciting this year but this year I want to give the proclamation to my friend and colleague Jenny Mott who is my education coordinator and I would like her to tell you what's been happening in the city also, before, before I do that, I also want to let you guys know that there's some flyers in the back for a free um, movie that's going to um, be given in a local non-denominational church on Ramona this year, um, this month rather, and it's called It's Dark Here, and it's a true story of a family who lived here in Chino. So I hope you guys come out and see that. That's on the 29th. Jenny, I love you. Thank you for all that you've done. <laughs> All right. Um, she talked about the fact, and, and we've mentioned in the proclamation, that one in four adults deals with mental illness in their lifetime. We know that one in five students has a mental illness. And by the results of our California Healthy Kids survey that we do within the district, we know that about one third of the students have signs of clinical depression. So I'd say it's much more far reaching than what even the statistics say. Um, this year, we have reached the collaboration with the Chino Valley NAMI and our school district, 1,500 students teaching some wonderful program that we have called Ending the Silence. And this program teaches about um, sign first of all it, it talks about mental health and mental wellness as in addition to mental illness it talks about um, warning signs it talks about suicide and uh, danger signs what to do if somebody does seem suicidal whether it's the person themselves or a loved one and gives lots of resources and what to do so this program has 1,500 students in our school district is phenomenal. We've also reached 60 um, staff members that we te teach a class called Parents and Teachers as Allies. So they're actually learning about how to work with the students that have mental illness in their classroom. Because if you try and work with them in the same manner that you do other students, it often doesn't work. And there's a high dropout rate with students with some severe mental illnesses. That class has been really helpful. And we've done quite a bit of that in the last four years. Um, we also so we're lucky enough to bring um, NAMI on campus high school to three of the um, uh, four major high schools in the district. And this is a campus club where the students are actually um, bringing things about mental health awareness um, throughout the year. So it's really exciting to see how the tide is changing. So I just want to say and challenge all of you to 
spend Mental Health Awareness Month really educating yourselves about mental illness, and um, education is the key to decreasing that stigma. So thank you. Thank you. Um, tragically, it was a week and a half ago, two weeks, Chief, the young man from Don Lugo committed suicide. Um, usually the sad part about it when somebody commits suicide is nobody picks up on the telltale uh, signals they're giving. So it's always try to be aware of uh, your family, especially. Uh, if you start to act different and carry it on, you know, uh, you need to seek some help. And when a 16-year-old boy kills himself, it's just horrible. Just horrible. And somebody should have picked up on the signs. Usually there's, they send out signals that something's going on in their time. But So that sticks pretty close to home here in the city of Chino. So you guys keep up the, the good work and see if we can't cut down on this dilemma. Appreciate it. Take a round of applause. Thank you. Next, the Mayor's Home Beautification Award for May. Uh, the winner of this month is Jim Kramer on Preciado Avenue. Jim, would come up. Is this your wife? Yes, well, come on up, Mrs. Kramer. Barbara. Barbara. I'm Dennis. <laughs> I have a little certificate here we'd like to present to you folks. The Mayor's Home. Uh, there's your house right there on the screen. Uh, the Mayor's Home Beautification Award. Yeah. <laughs> well, we, we're going to give you a picture of that. Uh, uh, years ago when Eunice was mayor, uh, she's given the award. And uh, go oh, congratulations. They put the, the picture up there and the lady turns and goes, that ain't my house. And Eunice goes. <laughs> <laughs> uh, <laughs> we got it right this time. Yeah, we got it right. Yeah, 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 yeah. So if you ever So this honors you uh, as being the, the winner. Uh, here's the beautiful picture of your home we'd like you to have. And we have also from the Board of Supervisors, our new Board of Supervisor, uh, Kurt Hagman. He has a certificate of, rec of recognition for you uh, receiving the Chino uh, Home uh, Award. And uh, we have two lapel pins like I'm wearing here. Oh my God. No watch. <laughs> <laughs> Cheap Chino, you got to have 40 years before you get a watch. Here's two pen and pencil sets for you. Thank you. And to top it all off, we'd like you to put this in your yard, declaring you as the winners. What we do every year is we'll pick a, uh, uh, a winner for the whole year. And you, if you win, you'll be invited to the Mayor's State of the City address, give you a lunch, and give you a little extra prize for winning it. So uh, you'll be entered in next year's. Okay, uh, okay. Who does the, uh, the I'll work? Just, I'll say a couple of words. I thought you were going to, I thought he was. <laughs> I made, made a mistake giving him that microphone. <laughs> well, uh, actually, um, we want to thank uh, the City of Chino, City Council. All you guys, uh, it was a real surprise, and um, thanks a lot. Well, <laughs> congratulations. Thank congratulations. You. Good job. Keep up the good work. <laughs> okay, yeah. next is public communications. Mm -hmm. I'd like to call up Pastor Joe McTarsney of the Calvary Chapel, Chino Valley, uh, for our invocation, and uh, I would like to invite anyone who wishes to join us in the invocation to please stand. Pastor? Thank you, Mayor and City Council. Would you please join me in prayer? Our Father, we praise you for the wonderful privilege that we have to come before your presence. And Lord, first off, I, I thank you for, for our city, and I just pray that you please keep um, all the community um, folks safe this evening. 
And Lord, I lift up this meeting before you, and I just pray that you grant um, our city council uh, just with wisdom, Lord, with all the decisions that they would have to make this evening concerning the items that's on the agenda. And so, Lord, thank you that you you are faithful to hear and receive our prayers, and I lift this up before you in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Pastor. Have a seat, folks. Um, I don't have any written requests to speak, but uh, anybody who would like to address the council on any item that is not on the agenda may do so now. Seeing none, we have some Don Lugo students in attendance. And our tradition here is for you uh, guys to get up, give us your name, and uh, I guess you're all from Don Lugo, uh, your class and your instructor. So if you want to line up. I don't know. Go ahead. Hello, my name is Andrew Gonzalez. I'm a senior at Don Antonio Luga High School. I'm here for my economics class for my teacher, Mr. Poteet, and I'm also part of the Teen Advisory Committee for the City of Chino. Oh, there he is. Thank you. Thank you. Hello, I'm Angel Chavez, and I'm here to, um, I don't know. <laughs> What class are you in? What's um, this class for? Government. I'm doing this for my economics class. Okay. I'm a little who? late. Who? Uh, economics. Okay. Who's your instructor? Uh, Mr. Poti. Okay. Well, and appreciate you being here. I'm here to get my grade up. <laughs> <laughs> well, now you know what, what school you're going to and who your teacher is. That's good. Yes. We're going to do well. Thank you. Thank you. Um, Go ahead. Hello, my name is Tony Chicas, and I'm here from Don Lugo High School. Right now what I'm doing is a project from Mr. Poti, same as my classmates, and okay. that's all. Thank you. <laughs> Hi, my name is Kathy Rocha. I'm from Don Antonio Lugo High School, and I'm here because of Andrew Gonzalez. He invited okay. me here. Appreciate it. Thank you for being here. All right. Uh, anybody else wish to address the council on any item that does not appear on the agenda? One last time. Steve, come on up. Identify yourself for... Bingo. Bingo? Oh. <laughs> How did you know? <laughs> I'm uh, Steve Lewis. Uh, I say thank you, uh, Mayor and City Council. We, uh, for, I'm a uh, vice president for the Chino Youth Museum, so we got a spring bingo bash coming up here on the 18th. It's a Monday down at Brinderson Hall. For uh, doors open at 5:30. Brinderson Hall. Brinderson Hall at the Chino Fairgrounds. Yes, Brinderson Hall. And uh, but when I invite the, the public and everybody to come down, it's a very good time. 50/50 uh, raffles uh, have lots of prizes, and uh, it's a good time had by all. Thanks. Appreciate it. Thank you. Anybody else? Seeing none, we'll close uh, public communications. Next, the consent consent calendar. Anybody wishing to pull an item for discussion may do so now. Okay, we have a motion by Council Member Howie, seconded by Council Member Elrod. Please vote. Item passes unanimously with uh, Council Member Duncan absent. Public hearings. Prior to the vote of City Council, any member of the audience will have the opportunity to address the Council on any items listed under public hearings. Council request, but you're not required that you limit your time to five minutes for your presentation. Item seven, Community Development Block Grant, CDBG Program, five-year consolidated plan, 2015-16, one-year action plan. Our staff uh, this evening is by our <coughs> Director of Community Development, Mr. Nicholas Liguri. Nicholas? Thank you, Mayor and Council members. Every year, the city receives funding from the Federal Department of Housing and Urban Development, or HUD, through the Community Development Block Grant, or CDBG, program. These funds are allocated to various public service and capital projects throughout the city through the Council's approval of a one-year action plan. And every five years, the Council is also asked to approve a consolidated plan, which identifies the areas of need within the city where these funds should be spent. Staff is requesting council, of appro uh, council approval of these plans this evening. 
The primary objective of the CDBG program is the development of viable urban communities by providing adequate housing, suitable living environment, and expanding <coughs> economic opportunities, principally for persons of low and moderate income. The one-year action plan, which is contained within the five-year consolidated plan, details the proposed uses for this fiscal year 2015-16 CDBG allocation of $486,851. Approximately $73,000 has been programmed for public services, which is the limit established by HUD. And these funds are proposed to be awarded to seven different agencies based upon the recommendations of the Community Services Commission. Over $300,000 has been programmed for capital improvement and economic development projects. Balance is utilized for administrative costs of the program, including fair housing services. Tonight's hearing fulfills HUD's citizen participation requirements for the adoption of the consolidated plan. 30-day public review period was conducted from March 2nd to April 1st of this year, giving interested community members the opportunity to submit input on any concerns they may have regarding the plan. No comments were received. Following final <coughs> adoption, the consolidated plan which includes the one-year action plan will be submitted to HUD for its review and approval. Community Services Commission respectfully submits these funding recommendations to the City Council. The recommendations have been thoroughly evaluated according to HUD requirements, including their compatibility with the needs assessment, mm -hmm. likelihood of duplication of services, and the amount of funding available. Staff recommends that the Council conduct a public hearing and take the <coughs> actions noted in the staff report. That concludes Thank my you, report. Uh, prior to Council questions or comments, Anybody, I'll open the public hearing. Anybody in the audience wish to address the council on this item may do so now. Saying none, we'll close the public hearing. No questions. We have a, a, a motion by Councilman Howey, seconded by Councilmember Elrod. Please vote. Item passes four yes with one absent. Under new business, award of contract, vehicle lift project. Staff report again is by Jose Alar, our Assistant City Manager, Public Works Director. Jose. Thank you, Mayor and members of the City Council. Included in this fiscal year's equipment management fund is a project for the replacement of the city's fleet vehicle lifts. This project, if approved tonight, will provide staff with two additional working lifts out at fleet, which are necessary to maintain our fleet of 272 vehicles. Earlier this fiscal year, we went out to bid for this project, but because we only received one bid and we wanted to review the scope of work for services on this project, the City Council rejected bids on January 6, 2015. This project before you tonight will provide the removal of the existing lifts, <coughs> the removal of any contaminated soil, pouring of new concrete flooring for these lifts, the 10,000 pound and a 12,000 pound lift equipment itself, and all the necessary labor and miscellaneous equipment necessary to complete the job. Now staff has updated the specifications and a notice inviting bids was published locally. On March 9th, the city received two bids for this project. Tafoya and Associates of Chino Hills, California submitted the lowest bid in the amount of $119,264. In addition, <coughs> staff's requesting an authorization to spend $12,000 for unanticipated worker contingencies bringing the total project cost to 131264 This concludes my report, and I'd be happy to answer any questions on this item. Thank you, Jose. Prior to council comments or questions, anybody in the audience wishing to address the council on this item may do so now. <coughs> Quiet, quiet group. A close public comment. Uh, Eunice. Jose, how do these bids compare to the first set? Um, uh, like I said, on the first one, we received one bid, and that bid for the base work itself was $136,791.68, which this is now lower by $17,528. Okay, thank you. Quick question. <coughs> Councilman Howie? Yeah, Jose, uh, what about the contamination issue? Is there any, any possibility that it could incur more costs or there could be more contamination there at all? Yeah. We believe the 12000 is adequate to uh, address that. We've done some estimates on that. And uh, but included in the bid is to to remove the soil, but again the twelve thousand. If if there's more that's that's done under there because of, of seepage from the hydraulic fluid in the past, right. uh, we feel that's enough to cover it. Okay, very good. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Councilman. Yes, I had this pulled uh, when we first 
received this because I thought it was high for two lifts. You know, usually lifts are ten to twenty thousand, and I thought, well, there's got to be a heck of a lot of cement. But mm -hmm. you're taking one that goes all the old lifts that go all the way to the ground and they leak oil, and you're squaring up a lot of cement and you have to level a lot, so the bid is reasonable. Uh, thank you. Thank you. I would entertain a motion. Moved by Mayor Pope. <laughs> you got him out there. How did that happen? <laughs> Moved by Councilman Howery. Second by Councilman Elrod. Please vote. Somebody just got under the wire there. That passes four uh, yes and one absent. Um, item nine, award of contract. Acelia, is that how you pronounce it? Acelia? Acela? Approve a uh, service agreement with the seller permit automation upgraded and asset management software. Uh, our staff report is by Ryan Shumway, our information tech manager. Good evening, Mayor and City Council members. The purpose of this agenda item is to request your approval to enter into an agreement with the seller of San Ramon, California to upgrade our 1999 permitting system. This project is budgeted this fiscal year and is funded by general facilities development impact fees. Recognizing that the city could benefit from the addition of new features and a need to manage the city's new land development activities, a team of internal stakeholders from community development, public works, and finance evaluated three vendors which offer solutions of this type. The evaluation included vendor demonstrations and meetings with other municipalities currently utilizing permitting software. This process led staff to recommending that the city purchase a cell automation. This new version will provide a more streamlined experience for applicants and internal users. The land management side will improve service delivery, save time for citizens and agency staff, and accelerate staff productivity. The asset management side will allow staff to track and manage the life cycle of infrastructure assets, maximize utilization of available resources, and manage work orders. Acela has proven experience developing and implementing similar automated land and asset systems for approximately 142 California jurisdictions. This project includes professional services in the amount of 697,000, first year of service for 48,000, new licensing for 163,000, and a 10% contingency for a total project cost of $999,993.50. The city attorney has reviewed and approved all necessary agreements, and that concludes my report. I'd be happy to answer any questions, and we do have our seller representative here if you have any product questions that I can't answer. Thank you. Prior to council comments or questions, I'll open this for public comment. Anybody in the audience wishing to address the council on this item? Seeing none, we'll close public comment. Uh, Eunice? You didn't mention it, but uh, how much money is in there for training employees? The training is uh, included with the scope of work. So it's a 20-month project, and there's about a week worth of training for administrative and train the trainer start implementing and using the software? Uh, we have a go live period that we will have uh, support. Um, they are going to do the train the trainer, which is similar to what was done with the CAT RMS, where we're going to train staff to be able to train other members of staff as they come on board. Okay, what about data conversion and proofing? Data conversion is part of the project. That's part of our professional services. There are always problems with data conversion. Yes. Always. Yep. So getting staff involved to proof the end product is going to be very important as well. Yeah, there is a phase of user acceptance testing that is within that project deadline, okay. that timeline. Thank you. A good question. Councilman Howie? So, so I see that for the, we have a maintenance agreement for the first three years, and then we have options for renewals. <coughs> Um, what, what about an annual cost for renewals at that point? Uh, do, we, do we have an idea what those will, will run um, uh, the, after the three years? Yeah, yeah, we locked it in for, we did the two, the four, uh, four or five years, so we know that there's always going to be a 5% increase. Okay. So for the first five years, it'll always go up by 5% every year. Um, now that number may jump more. If we add more licenses, then we will be doing maintenance on those more. So we're looking at about 47000 per year. Is that what the cost is? Mm -hmm. Okay, and then since the last one lasted us 15 years, are we going to have a pretty much of a 15-year guarantee on this million dollars we're spending, or is a possibility, you know, that we're going to get a pretty good long life out of this? I think we'll get a long life. The Acela has been here for a long time. Um, the existing permits plus system that we have now was one of their original products. Okay. Um, that's one of the data conversion. Uh, we're going with a vendor who's just done this many times, so. They've uh, proven themselves. Good. That's all I have. Mayor Pro Tamilo. How many licenses are we getting? 
Uh, I'd have to look. I don't have the exact number on me, so hang on here. We are doing 30 named user licenses for asset 40 for the land. <coughs> and then the citizens access, which is the portal that opens up for citizens, is based on population. Uh, city manager, Mr. Ballantyne, uh, when I had met with him yesterday, we were discussing this item, and this all sounds like IT jibber jash to, to me and probably a lot of people out in the audience. Well, that's because you live and breathe it. Most of the people don't. Um, just briefly, the way he explained it to me, it was it's a pretty cool system, how they can report and it all comes together. Matt, if you can give them what you gave me yesterday, it was appreciate it. Yeah, there's two main components. One, one is... Um, you know, since we have a lot of activity, um, this provides an opportunity for the public to track their projects in addition to having our staff um, uh, log in the pro progress of individual projects. The other, another neat component is there's a lot of data that's collected out in the field. So, for example, some of our building inspectors, they can have tablets, they can go out in the field. Um, when they do an inspection, mark it off at the field, and when they come in, to City Hall or the home base. It's basically uploaded into the system. So it creates a lot That's of efficiency cool. overall. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. But the contractors, they can see where they're at. That's That yeah, sounds nice. Is there going to be older data uh, loaded into that if someone wants to check on a project and see if yes. they had final inspection? All our existing data that is in Permits Plus will be included. Oh, great. <clears throat> Okay, no other questions. We have a motion by Mayor Pro Tim Yeloa, seconded by Councilman Howie. Please vote. Item passes four with one absent. <laughs> Item 10, introduction of ordinance number 2015-003 uh, relating to fireworks. Our staff report is by Linda Reich, our Director of Community Services. Linda. Thank you, Mayor, members of the Council. Before you tonight for consideration is a change to Municipal Code Section 8.12 relating to fireworks. The major change would allow for the sale and use of fireworks in the more developed areas of the preserve where they are currently prohibited. At its December 22, 2014 meeting, the Community Services Commission voted 6 to 1 to recommend to the City Council that the code be amended to allow fireworks in the preserve to create parity with regard to the use and sale of fireworks citywide. As shown in the staff report, the commission is recommending that fireworks remain prohibited south of Pine Avenue at the recommendation of the fire district due to the fact that that area is still sparsely developed. Additionally, staff is recommending that fireworks be prohibited east of Euclid between Merrill and Kimball Avenues to the city limits, which primarily covers the airport. The city attorney is also recommending minor cleanup language to this section of the code. It's staff recommendation tonight that the City Council approve the ordinance, or I'm sorry, the introduction of ordinance number 2015-003, amending sections 8.12.040, 8.12.170, and 8.12.200 of the Chino Municipal Code to be read by title and number only and waive further reading of the ordinance. That completes my report and I'd be happy to answer any questions. Thank you. Uh, prior to Council discussions or questions, Anybody in the audience wish to address the council on this item? Seeing none, we'll close the public hearing. Uh, any comments by council? Eunice? Um, it looks like a survey was done. Yes. Um, mm -hmm. On whether we should allow fireworks or not continue to allow safe and sane. And it looks like two thirds of those polled said yes. That's correct. So there still is um, an overwhelming support of continuing with safe and sane fireworks. Mm -hmm. I think the public needs to know that. Also, uh, we originally did not allow the fireworks in the preserve because it was largely undeveloped and there was a lot of agricultural land and, and materials that could easily catch on fire. So this proposal brings it forward now to um, allow the majority or the great amount of land down there that is developed now to have safe and safe. Okay, thank you very much. Anybody else? Uh, we have a motion by Councilman Howie, second by Councilman Elrod. Please vote. Item passes four, one, one absent. Jimmy? Yes, Mayor. Mayor, members of the Council, this is ordinance number. 
This is ordinance number 215 <laughs> No, I just, I just uh, missed the button there. We got to retrain our city attorney I every other week. the button, <laughs> it's shrinking. So it reads, an ordinance of the city council of the city of Chino, California, amending section 8.12.040, 8.12.170, and section 8.12.200 of the Chino Municipal Code. Thank you, you Jimmy. Glasses, yeah. Jimmy. It must be something. Can't find the budget. Yeah. <laughs> Item 11, approval of bond documents for special tax bond of Community Facilities District 2005-1, improvement area number three. Our staff report this evening by the director of our finance department, Mr. Rob Burns. Mr. Burns. Uh, good evening, Mayor and members of the City Council. On March 17th, the City Council approved the issuance of CFD 2005-1 Improvement Area 3 bonds and the substantially final forms of the Fiscal Agent Agreement, the Bond Purchase Agreement, and the Continuing Disclosure Agreement. Tonight we're seeking approval of the preliminary official statement and the property appraisal for Improvement Area 3. These are the final documents needed prior to the issuance of the bonds which are scheduled for the end of this month. Therefore, staff recommends that you adopt resolution 2015-016. And that concludes my Thank report. Thank you, Mr. Burns. Prior to council questions or comments, anybody in the audience wish to address the council on this item? we got a quiet group this evening. Uh, we have a motion by Councilman Elrod, the second by Mayor Pro Tem at Yaloa. Please vote. Item passes four and uh, one absent. Okay. The next under new business is the Joint City Council Public Financing Authority. Councilman Howie? Yes, I would like to call the uh, Joint City Council Meeting and Public Financing Authority uh, refunding of the Community Facilities District bonds, adopt resolutions to authorize the issu issuance of the 2015 Special Tax Refunding Bonds and Staff Report tonight by Rob Burns. Rob? Uh, good evening, Chairperson uh, Howie and members of the board. Uh, low interest rates in the bond market have created refinancing opportunities for four of our community facility districts located in the city of Chino. Refinancing the CFDs will provide a reduction in the annual CFD levy to property owners and or developers within these CFDs. Based on an analysis using current market conditions, refinancing these four, F four CFDs will provide a total savings of $6.2 million dollars to property owners and developers over the remaining life of the bonds. In order to accomplish these savings, the city will utilize the City of Chino Public Financing Authority. The authority will issue revenue bonds and use the proceeds to purchase the refinancing bonds. The city's financing team has prepared the necessary documents to issue the new bonds in order to achieve the debt service savings for each of the districts. It's anticipated the bonds will be sold by negotiated sale on May 21st with final closing of the issue scheduled for June 4th. Uh, that concludes my report and I'm available for any questions. Okay. It's your show. Anybody wishing to make a public comment about this uh, item? Please do so now. Seeing none, any um, uh, comments from council? No? Okay, we have a motion from Mayor Pro Tem Yudloa and second by Councilman Elrod. Please vote. And it passes four, four to nothing with uh, Councilman Duncan being absent. Uh, that takes care of that. Are you going to adjourn us? No. You're not oh, going? Well, yeah, I'd like to adjourn. <laughs> I'm going to be on this board all night. You better having, adjourn us. I'm having fun with the, Get the sleep facilities bags out. Uh, authority, financing authority. So, yes, I would like to adjourn <laughs> the uh, financing authority. Back. Thank, Thank you, Councilman Howie. Like. Under Mayor and Council reports, first I'd like to invite everyone to attend the Healthy Chino Bike Day at Founders Park at 15800 Main Street on Saturday, May 9th from 9 a.m. to 11 a.m. This event, event includes a bicycle safety training uh, by, our, by our Chino Police Department. Uh, there will be a, a five-mile community bike ride led by the healthy Chino staff uh, along with refreshments and raffle prizes available at the conclusion of the event. If you'd like more information, please call 909-334-3478 or visit HealthyChino.com. Secondly, if you'd like to learn about Chino's rich history, you guys got to go to this thing. You really got to go. Um, then come out to the Chino Valley Historical Society's 90th Annual Pioneer Picnic at the Chino Community Building on B Street on Sunday, May 17th from 11.30 to 3.30. Uh, all attendees are asked to bring a dish of their choice. 
uh, if you can find some vintage photos uh, of Geno's history, and also enjoy some home style uh, cooking, uh, desserts, uh, classic cars. They're gonna have a little car show. Friends and community for fun. Um, they come, I've been to that picnic, they come from all the United States. You know, people have moved out of Chino and they're living in Wisconsin or somewhere. And uh, it's uh, really something to attend. And when you do bring your choice of uh, your entree or dessert, you gotta bring your own plate and your plastic fork and knife and your napkin. So uh, this year we're gonna be sitting out in the lawn too if you wanna eat outside, so it's gonna be pretty cool. Yeah, you cheers? Yeah, if you wanna. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, but they're seating inside the community building if you choose to eat there. But, um, next, also, I'd like to invite everyone to attend the Chino Youth, uh, <coughs> Youth uh, Museum uh, Spring uh, Bingo Bash on Monday the 18th. Um, the doors open at 5.30, and the cost the, at the gate is 25 per person, $20 if you purchase it prior to the event. Um, I'll have the privilege of him seeing that event again for the 18th millionth time. So, uh, uh, Gloria Smith, is Gloria here tonight? No? Gloria Smith does our 50 50. She's amazing. She runs around there selling 50 50 tickets, and the least amount of money I've seen her raise, what, $1,000, Steve? Yeah. Uh, <laughs> well, nobody can say no to her. Well, I know. Yeah, she's, a, she's something else. Uh, yeah, so that's a lot of fun too. So go to the picnic and then go to the bingo. You know, have a great time. Um, and finally, I'd like to remind everyone to save the date for the annual Mayor's State of the City on Friday, May 29th at 11.30 a.m. at Chafee College. Uh, if more information, you can call the uh, Chino Chamber of Commerce. Okay, Mayor Pro Tem Yuloa. That was a busy couple of weeks. Um, okay. Thursday, April 23rd, I attended the uh, Sir Optimist event called Journey to Achievement, Live Your Dream Awards. Uh, and two of our local Chino gals uh, received um, awards, financial awards. One was Dorinda Steele, who's uh, studying to become a teacher. Another is uh, Andrea Myers, and she's studying to become a nurse. On Friday, April 24th, I attended the Southern California Water Committee quarterly meeting that was held in Rancho Santa Margarita, and Congressman Ken Calvert spoke about water, of course. On Thursday, April 30th, I attended the opening ceremonies of the Don Antonio Lugo High School Don Lugo We Remember event. I don't know if any of the students here this evening uh, attended that, but did you? It was a great event. Very well attended. There were over 90 veterans who attended. Um, it's honoring those that have served this country, and each table, uh, I believe, had a veteran sitting at it, and the students were able to <coughs> interview the veteran and find out um, what had happened to them when they were, uh, you know, performing their service. But the amazing thing, I think, is um, we know veterans. We interact with them every day, but there's rarely ever an occasion when you really get to sit down and ask them. Ask them what they did, where they served, what their experiences were, and a lot of the veterans don't like to share. So the veterans that were there this, uh, this day uh, wanted to share. They brought pictures, memorabilia. It was really a nice event. Chief Comstock was there as well as Captain Wes Simmons. And Mr. Pope, who organized the event, did a fantastic job, just a fantastic job. He and does really, it every year. He does, and I really applaud that school and Mr. Pope for going out of their way to honor veterans. It was really touching. And of course, um, our Chief Comstock, that was where she went to high school, so it was a very special occasion <laughs> for her. And they were thrilled to have their own, very own chief who, um, in attendance, who graduated Alumni. from Alumni. Uh, Alumni. Yeah, it was really Famous. nice. Also on Thursday, it was a busy day, uh, Supervisor Kurt Hagman had an open house. I attended that. And then that evening, um, later that evening, the FFA 4-H dinner for the auction buyers. Uh, this dinner um, was really a, a very nice event to honor those who participate in the FFA and 4-H Junior Fair auction that's held every year. This year it's going to be on Saturday, July 11th. And our local kids who are involved in agriculture, of course, have an opportunity to show their animals. Some of them win prizes uh, and they sell the animals. So I encourage uh, those in the listening audience this year to become involved in that. Again, it's July 11th this year. On Saturday, May 2nd, um, my husband participated in a uh, 
car exhibit, an old car exhibit, at one of the um, executive hangars on the south side of the airport. So we were able to watch the air show uh, that was this weekend. It was really fun, kind of from a little bit different angle on the south side of the airport, but it was fun. It was awesome airplanes, and I'm sure Councilman Howie will speak more about that. And then coming up uh, this Thursday, in two days, is the National Day of Prayer. And there will be uh, a ceremony here on the City Hall steps at 1130. There's also one in the morning uh, that's held at the Doubletree from 7 to 9 in the morning, and I'll be speaking there. And then that evening at St. Margaret Mary Church, there'll be another event there, and I'll present the City's proclamation to them. And let's see. May 8th is Friday is National Public Gardens Day, so I invite you all to come and National visit Public the what? Gardens Day. You didn't ever heard of it, huh? But who has? <laughs> well, a I've lot never of heard people of it. have. Raise your hand who have heard of that. Out of touch. <laughs> anyway, Garden. I invite you all to come and uh, visit the Chino Basin Water Conservation District Gardens. It's 4594 San Bernardino Street. Uh, we'd love to have you come down and see what we have to offer and see what services we have as well. And that's all I have. Thank you. Councilman Elrod. Yes, Mayor. Uh, well, I had one meeting so far was with the, uh, Tom Howie, and we did economic development and getting ready for ICSC, and uh, there's a lot of neat things coming up. So I think. Uh, I think after you guys come back from Vegas, you need a good report because we, we've got a lot going on in Chino, sure. so to the good. That concludes my report, Mayor. Thank you, Councilman Howie. Okay, well, I'll, I'll immediately address the air show because it's one of my favorite events every year. And where else can you see 70-year-plus se planes still flying and then get mixing with, with jets and the, uh, and the Air Force's uh, F-22 Raptor, which I'm sure anybody in Chino probably heard uh, last weekend. Uh, yeah, you don't want one of them bad boys boy, coming after uh, you. That's for, that's for sure. But, but talking about veterans, um, I hadn't seen Wilbur Richardson, who's kind of our local uh, uh, vet from World War II. And, and, and uh, Saturday afternoon, I, he was there. I sat down and talked to Wilbur, who's, um, uh, who's about 92, 93 years old. And he was, a, he was a gunner on a B-17 over Europe in the 8th Air Force in World War II. And I, and I said, boy, Wilbur, it's great, it's great to see you. And it's been, what, 72, 71 years, I think, since he was in the war. He said, yeah, it's great to be seen. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so um, okay. it was great to see Wilbur because he's he's such a treasure. I mean, he, he was wounded on his last mission um, and got a Purple Heart and he won the Distinguished Flying Cross. The dis he won like five air medals, and uh, he's it's quite he's quite a local uh, veteran in, in World War II. Um, we should I think he's been here a long time ago. I think Wilbur was here, but um, so in in saying that. I want to invite everybody to come out to our Memorial Day service that we have at the community building. It's going to be on Monday, Memorial Day. I think it's May 25th. Is that right. correct? It starts at 10 a.m. and um, it's just uh, we it, we have the uh, the, vet, the vets out there that give us a 21 gun salute. We, we the, the kids raise the flag. And well, we, that's an issue. Uh, well, yeah. Usually, if the flag goes up, because sometimes they have a little trouble with the flagpole, but eventually they get the flag up. And um, uh, they're, they're working on. They're working on that. Yeah, get, <laughs> one year, we, one year we looked and we go, "Boy, we got to paint that flagpole." The next next year was freshly painted by the city, so that was nice. But it's it's a nice event. It's not a long event, um, but it's a, it's a moving event oh, on Memorial Day. So if you get a chance to come out, and we'll mention it again before we have one more meeting before that, so we'll mention it again. And then just a couple other things, uh, Councilman <coughs> Duncan. Assistant City Manager Jose O'Leary and myself went to Washington, D.C. about 10 days ago. We did our, our annual lobby trip to talk about our federal agenda. We have a number of different items that we present to. Uh, we went to the Department of Justice to talk about the COPS program and trying to obtain money for the police department. We went to the Department of Transportation looking for money, transportation dollars for, for Central Avenue widening and also the famous uh, 71 uh, Pine Avenue connector off the 71. So between that and some of our counseling programs and all the different things that we went to, um, we go to try to get money. It's, it's difficult. I kind of I kind of think of an old thing that was said about, I think it was Abraham Lincoln or during the Civil War grant, they'd always say when they went to Washington and talked to people, they would get the Potomac two-step 
which meant the Potomac, Potomac two step. which is the Potomac <laughs> River right there. And the two-step meant you go to Washington. They they're very nice. They're happy to see you, and they smile. And then you, you tell them what you want, and they continue to smile, and you never know what you get. So we're so we didn't come back with a bag of money for Gino, but we're working on it. So that's uh, that, that's that's what happened there. And then uh, I attended Councilman or Supervisor Hagman's. Um, uh, uh, open house and boy he redecorated the office beautiful office had a great had a really a good event outside they closed the whole street down in Chino Hills and they had some booths there and, and it was really a really a good event uh, Eunice showed up so did Councilman um, Duncan was there also um, and then the Economic Development Committee I think I think we covered it all that's it that's all I got thank you City Manager you think to report? I have no report there. thank you City Attorney Mr. I'll Guterres uh, Chief Comstock, no Chief Shackelford. No report. Okay, very good. Thank you all. Um, we're going to adjourn, but our next meeting as of the City Council will be the budget workshop. That's a thrill a minute, is when you go to the budget workshop. You don't want to miss that. Uh, it'll be held on Thursday, May 14th at 4 o'clock here in the Council Chambers. The next regular meeting of the City Council will be on Tuesday, May 19th at 7 p.m. Closed session at 6 if necessary. We stand adjourned. Have a safe evening. The budget workshops are more fun on a barrel.